Okay, so I've been uh, working on the washes, continuing the washes. The next couple washes we're gonna need are Bad Ab Black, Baal Red, and Leviathan Purple. <clears throat> so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our Baal Red and wash it all over the skin of the model. I already did it. I started on this part of the video and then um, my camera puts it out, so I had to, I'm having to refilm it now. But as you can see, I just took the wash and I spread it all over the skin of the model. Now I'm not painting these spines on the wings, I'm just painting his arms, his back, his torso. Um, and you just want to get it so that it flows smoothly and evenly. Um, parts that you might forget if you're not careful or you might miss are right here underneath the arms. Um, oops, right there underneath the arms just because the wash flows down with gravity so I have to make sure you get some of it up in the hard to hard to see hard to reach areas oops sorry Mr. Vargeist I like how the red gives it a very um, subtle kind of almost demonic Tone. If I were to ever collect demons and do like bloodthirsters, I kind of think I would do something like this where they have more of a human flesh tone instead of just straight red and then just do a red tint to their skin. The next thing you're going to do after you wash the body and also the legs, don't forget the legs, with the red wash is you're going to take your Badab Black and you are going to paint. Um, the ligaments of the wings. <clears throat> so, what I mean by that is, I got to work on these sides before my video camera died. You're giving shading and also separating the wing structure from the uh, spine of the arms. So, just spreading it on nice and evenly. You don't want too much because if you get too much, then it's going to all start to pool and then um, it's going to dry in like the lower pockets and you don't want that. You want it to spread nice and evenly so there's wash everywhere. Or I guess as the new GW range says, shade. I like how the Bad Eye Black also gives it a very gritty, dirty kind of look. It's that, that, you know, that Bram Stoker's Dracula, Francis Ford Coppola kind of, kind of look. Very dark and grimy. Okay. And I think I just have to do down here these wings um, on this side, which, you know, I'm going to just do this off camera because it's a lot easier to hold the model and, and stuff um, and have to show you at a weird angle where you might be like <laughs> craning your neck to see. So I'm going to finish this step off camera. Again, this is the Bad Eye Black into the wings. And then when I'm done with this, then we'll come back and um, I'll, I'll let everything else dry, the ball red the bad eye black and then we'll get on to the leviathan purple for the last part of the shading okay the wash hasn't completely dried yet but I'm gonna get started on the next section so we're gonna be using our leviathan purple and this is just gonna be accenting and deepening the reds in the skin already so we're not gonna cover the entire model uh, like we did um, we're really just picking out places where we want to deepen the shadows of the reds. So like along the abdomen, 
um, in the pockets where all the shadows are, along this musculature by its back, you know, places like that. So you just kind of experiment and go with whatever you like the most. Try to avoid the flat areas and keep to the, um, the you know, all these really nicely molded lines. Recesses, places where there are shadows. Way too much. This is where I have like the most fun when I'm painting. I get to really use the wash as a as like a painter's aid to help you color and um, you know, find, find the character and the inner life of your models. It really helps you. New, new painters especially, if you're a new painter, if you're just getting into the hobby. Like, if I had washes when I started, man, I would have been amazing. But it's good that I'm a little older now. Really appreciate how they help me if you ever feel like you know you use too much, you're using too much washes, if you want to tone it down, then um, <clears throat> you can just paint over them again. So you see how the the talon flesh and the um, <clears throat> the bat up black for the wings have made it almost look like a like a light brownish color. It took away the pink, made it look almost lightish brown. So we're still going to wait till we get to this for our finished model. Something that's going to help us now is that we're going to use the um, Leviathan purple and a little bit more beta black to wash the wings with. Actually, I'm actually going to start with more beta black. The thing is, black is such a you know such a stark color. It just darkens without really adding in any kind of color. So the purple is what's going to give it a nice colorful hue to it. And make it look like a living tissue. Or I guess, in the vampire's case, unliving, undead tissue. Do the same thing for down here. Like I said, I'm really, the style that I'm going for is just a really dark, gothic, dirty, and, um, you know, that kind of look. If you're going for the, the Games Workshop style, which is going to be much brighter, much more colorful, um, then you're totally welcome to do that too. All it takes is less washes.
and try and move all the wash off to the side so that I can pick it pick it up and it doesn't um, we don't leave any unsightly like watermarks in the in the recesses it's the hardest thing you you do the washes and then you think oh it's awesome now I'm just gonna let it sit and I'm gonna watch TV and do other stuff for half an hour and you come back and there's this huge watermark where the wash dried in the recess because you um, left your model standing upright and then the gravity just made all the wash kind of flow towards the bottom where it all pooled and just got really ugly looking so we want to avoid that as much as possible so I'm just experimenting because um, when I made my test model I wasn't really paying you know strictly too much attention on how much wash it took to achieve each stage of the look that I wanted so um, you can stop at any time at, at some point it's just going to be me kind of experimenting again to find the right uh, color combo okay that should that should about do it so I'm gonna let my guy kind of dry for a while. I think this is the the level that I want to achieve with the washes before I begin the highlighting. So now I'm going to let the model dry completely. I'm going to touch it. I'm going to let it just dry how it will. So um, just going to leave it and then when we get back then we're going to start the highlighting, doing the details like <coughs> adding teeth, eyes, um, highlighting up the hair on the back, highlighting up the bone spines and um, doing all of that okay so we'll see you in just a little while okay now that we're moving on to the details the first colors you'll need are or the colors that you need in this section are commando khaki bleached bone ogren flesh and but they have a black so we're going to be painting the spines on the wings and you're going to be taking the first part in this step is take your commando khaki and you're going to paint the spines as well as you can don't worry if you make a mistake um, that's what the bedab black is for. So you're going to be, be painting down each spine just like that. And then, when you get to the end, Take it a little step further and paint bleached bone next. This one you want to paint within the commando khaki so we still see the commando khaki surrounding thin little bits of bleached bone at the center. So you can do as little or as much of this as you want. It's really up to you how, how um, you know, because this is almost like my own personal color scheme So for these guys, so it's, it's really up to you how much, how much you paint. And then when you're done, you're going to be taking your Badab Black and painting the, um, the sides of the spines, where the spines meet the wing pretty much is where you're going to be painting. I'm 
like that. So that it'll, it'll cover up any of the mistakes that you just made. But you still get that nice, nice coverage of the bleached bone and the commando khaki. And that is just what's so great about these washes. Okay, so I already did all of these sides. So um, after the black wash dries, you're going to take your Ogren flesh wash and you're just going to paint over the bones a little bit. Let me show you what it's going to look like when you do that. It turns the bones almost this sort of, um, I want to say like, like uh, chicken, chicken bones, like drumsticks when, you, when you're eating drumsticks, like the part on the end with the gristle. It's got kind of that red, reddish, or not, not, not specifically red, but almost like um, just light, light brown, warm kind of reddish brown texture to it. Get something like that. Okay, so you do this with all four sides. I've already done it with the other three to kind of save time. And um, the next thing we're gonna do after you're done with that is, uh, you can pause the video now if, if you need to finish that step. <coughs> Because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take Codex Gray and we're going to paint up all the hair. So you're going to put just a little bit of Codex Gray onto the tip of your brush. Wipe most of it off on a napkin or on your wet palette. Then you're going to take the hair and then you're going to do very, very loose stripe work. Just try to hit the tips. You could also do, some painters would prefer to dry brush this, and that's fine too. Either would work, just take a dry brush with your fortress gray, or maybe one of the new dry colors in the range and do that, but I kind of like to actually hand paint the, the hair tips. Frost the tips. You can do this with all the hair, the hair on the back, if he's got a goatee, a stupid looking mohawk, the uh, hair behind the legs, on the front of the legs, anywhere where they've got these long spiny protrusions of hair you're going to take with the codex gray and you see how it really nicely highlights the tips while keeping that carried in granite, that brown, that rich dark brown color underneath. Excess off. I don't worry too much about the right side, can't really see it, but. There you go. So let me show you what it looks like down the back. <laughs> See, this is why having this wing over here is just so dumb because it's really hard to paint up the, the right side of the body with the wing right there. Anyways, <clears throat> once you're done painting all of the pieces of hair, and let that dry for a bit. While that's drying, we're going to take a little bit of blood red, or um, if you have any of the new reds in the range, um, we're going to paint in this guy's eyeballs right now. That is way too much Codex Gray on the side of this guy's head. 
forgot to wipe off the paint, I think. So, I'm gonna leave that there. Um, yeah, let me show you. This Mephiston Red, Mephiston Red, you're gonna take just a little dot of it and dot the guy's eyeballs. Make sure you can tell what is actually his eyeball and try to aim for that rather than the little eyelid right underneath the, eye, the eyeball, which you should see since we um, did the wash. There we go. <clears throat> Last little detail in this section, we're gonna take a white. In this case, Ceramite white <coughs> and The reason we're using white and not a bone color is because we want We want it to really stand out. We want the fangs to stand out on the face Actually, I think my brush might be a little too wet I think when you're doing detail work you always want to make sure that your brush isn't also loaded up with some stowaway droplets of water from your from your water cup There, yeah, that looks great. If anything, you know, let that dry and then just put a little bit of a bad uh, black wash inside the mouth just to darken it up a little bit. Um, I'm also going to take a little bit of a thin down bad uh, black wash and paint the spikes one more time so that the gray isn't as prominent. It'll tie down the gray. But other than that, your guy is just about finished. He looks dark, he looks brooding, he looks horrific, horrific, and um, ready to hit the battlefield. So I'm going to do those last things. I'm going to paint some bada black into the hair one more time, into the teeth, and then I'm gonna base him, and then we'll show you what the finished Vargas model looks just after this. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Look at our two Vargas from Vargi Shore, all ripped and cut, ready to go out on the town. Oh yeah, wake up time, yeah, yeah. Cats are here, yeah, it's t-shirt time. Burgers for the boys, burgers for the boys. I hope you enjoyed this Warboss tutorial. Uh, it was a lot of fun to paint. Uh, these guys were done up really, really quick. Um, if you know, if I hadn't taken the time to actually film myself doing it, I just went from to, uh, straight to back. Um, not counting the drying time, I think it's you know to do a, a whole unit of three of these guys would take only a couple of hours. And um, I think they look really good. I, I much like this dark, brooding kind of color scheme to the um, to the regular GW1. I think I went for this guy. I gave him. Caridon granite bat ears just because I wanted to differentiate. Uh, I also gave him a Caridon granite little goatee because he had like some a little tuft of fur growing on down on his chin. So I might not do that for this guy though. Kind of like his ears the way they are. Just to be similar, I might eventually paint them um, that way. But for now, I kind of like it. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. How to paint? Uh, <laughs> how to paint? Uh, uh, Polly D and Vinny from. Vargi Shore. <laughs>